Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We are back. We are back. Bench Mob BNT podcast. The first episode that is back off of my hiatus. Man had another child. So we know how to take some time off for that one. But we got the big three. We got a movie episode coming for y'all for this one. Sports one. We'll have one coming later this week. But we got a movie one for y'all. Kwame, Miles, how y'all doing? Doing good, brother. I'm pretty good, man. I'm pretty good. Glad to be back. Glad to be back on the pod talking movies. This episode, what you can expect from the best sports podcast in New Jersey. We are going to be talking about our personal 10 favorite action movies. 10 favorite action movies, TV shows, our top TV shows from this year. And of course, we're going to give you some suggestions of movies or TV shows that you should watch. Starting off, we're going to go in this order. Miles, what is one of your favorite 10 action movies? One of my favorite 10. I mean, this is a guy who's made a couple that are going to be on my list probably, but uh, the John Wick series, that's one of my favorite ones. I think every single one was flawless, one through four. Uh, I think the first one was might be the best one just because of how it sets the tone for everything. And like, they come into his place, knock him out, kill his dog. And then it kind of like awakens a, a beast that he he had kind of like put away, you know, he was, uh, he was moving away from this life, but they brought it out of him because, you know, they killed his dog. And I think most of us would, we might crash out for our dog too. So I, I get it, John Wick. I get it. Um, <laughs> but that's, yeah. Uh, Keanu Reeves, great actor. I love him in that. Uh, I'm going to save the other ones for for later. But All right. That's on my honorable mention list for me. It didn't make my list, but Kwame, one of your favorite 10. And I already know you've seen that face. All right. All right. All right. All right. So I'm going to start it off with, I'm, I think I'm going to go with Transformers. Uh, Transformers, when it, when it first came out, ground breaking, bro. No one had done what Michael Bay did in the Transformers movie. Awesome graphics. Overall, pretty dope storyline. Starting a whole franchise. It was mad nostalgic. Like I'm big on like sci-fi robots, so when I saw that, I'm like, bro, what? Trans- like, Transformers? Transformers? Overall, um, pretty, like I said, dope movie. Shia LaBeouf. It was, before, you know, it, it was during the Shia LaBeouf era when everyone liked him. Not... <laughs> You, you know, before his fall off, but bro, it's a dope movie. I love the action, bro. The explosions, the transformations, bro. Legit. Like I was waiting for, like, yo, when when's Optimus gonna transform? When it was, I'm, I'm like, I went to the movie theaters. I think I, I saw him like opening night. Movie theater was packed. I think we got, we sat in the front of the theater. I'm, I'm like staring up at the screen, bro. I, I didn't care if my neck had a cramp in there or nothing, bro. I had to see the movie. I think it was dope. It was memorable and it was nostalgic, all all in one, bro. Love Transformers. Now for y'all, I think it, I think we have to set this base for our listeners, our viewers when they see this. What do you guys define though as an action movie? I think. I, I feel like, yeah. I mean, you go, you go. I'll, 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 you go I'm, I'm I'm trying to, I'm trying to like think. I, I was gonna say it's action movies. I think are they can be like a wide range of things. Like um, Tom Cruise movies are usually a lot of action. You see him running through the streets. These these deep chase scenes where somebody's running from somebody or they're chasing somebody down. And uh, another scene where there's like a lot of fighting, action, hand hand to hand combat. So. Um, I see that too. Like you, you got a wide range of uh, films that that fit that description. Um, that might not be similar, but in the the description of like action, um, like shooting, like a, a big shootout scene, um, like what's that uh, bank robbery scene with Fifty Cent and uh, Den of Thieves? Den of Thieves. That would be an action movie because there's constantly running from the cops you're shooting out with them at the end and even in the beginning the shootout at the the donut shop with the cops like that that is what i consider like that's not top tier action but it's still action nonetheless so yeah <clears throat> like you're constantly the 
yeah, it's constantly in movement. You're not yeah. just sitting there talking, trying to figure. Nah, you're you're, you're moving. You're, you're taking care of the problem right then and there. There's explosions, like like Miles said. There's gunshots. There's fighting. Somebody has to be doing something for it to be an action movie. If they're sitting down talking and, and trying to figure things out and trying to like, nah, nah, nah. I'm gonna need you to get, stop thinking. Start moving. So I, I think an action movie is essentially a movie that just you know has a lot of movement. It can be a wide range of movement, but they're moving, they're doing something or, or of some sort. Well, that works out. It's funny that Miles mentioned that. I'll just say that it wasn't on higher on my list, but it's on my list. Den of Thieves, one of my favorite action movies. What? Yes. No way. O'Shea. That was on your list? Yes, sir. O'Shea oh, Jackson sad. Jr. <laughs> I, I love <laughs> Den of Thieves, the action, the storyline. Um, Yeah, for me, I, I loved it. From be, from beginning to end, the scene that you mentioned, the shootouts, and of course the funny scene where they come, you know, man's trying to take Dodo on a date and they pull up with the gun. Yeah, that's going to be shown, you know, when I have my daughter film me. I'm going to show that scene for sure. But <laughs> Denim Thieves is on my list. Miles, back to you. Uh, I think I mentioned it earlier, but like the Mission Impossible movies with uh, Tom Cruise. I think I was first introduced to this in like elementary school. Like they were showing it randomly uh, after school, you know, after school program in the library, nothing else to do. You're watching it. I'm like, okay, this is a lot of action, a lot of shooting, uh, a lot of running. So Tom, Tom Cruise is one of the most, I think, athletic uh, actors in the game right now. So, um, and some of the later films, I'd say probably rank a little higher than, some of the early ones, because those chase scenes where he's just sprinting, like it almost feels like a mile in like four minutes down the road to get to wherever he has to go immediately. Um, yeah, those I think will always, regardless of ro- what Rotten Tomatoes says, like sometimes you take what they say into consideration, but most of the time I'm just like, I don't judge it because of them. I judge it because of what I see. But like, I think most of his films, Mission Impossible, they're at least a 90, at least a 90 plus because we love action. We love this is Tom Cruise's uh, lane right here. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> it's funny that you said that because Mission Impossible is actually on my list. Specific one, though, but it's, it's higher up right now. So I'm right now, though, I'm going to go with The Matrix, bruh. Damn. Iconic Damn. movie, bruh. Think of when you think of the Matrix, bro, I'm, I'm pretty sure everybody think about that one scene when he dodged in the bullets. The Matrix is iconic, defined, literally defined the era, like legit. It's the, it's the Matrix. Like before that, I'm like, yo, who's Keanu Reeves? Like, oh, he did with some speed. After the Matrix, everybody knew who he was. The Matrix itself, though, overall, I thought it was a pretty dope storyline. Um, you know, th- there are tons of action, tons of chase scenes. You're like, you know, you're, you're on the edge of your seat. And of course, you got the, the, the hero of the movie, Keanu Reeves, trying to figure things out. And then at the end, when he finally, like, you know, matches everything, when he stops the bullets, bro, that, that, that scene when I was like, well, when did that come out? 1999, 2000-ish? So I was like, what? Oh, like, nine? Bro, when I saw that scene, bro, when I saw that scene, I was like, yo, that's, that's crazy. Bro, like, how can you just stop the bullets before they, they hit him? He picked it out of the, the air and stared at it and dropped it. I'm like, yo, this is crazy. Like, bullet time, when, when he's dodging the bullets, bro, the Matrix itself overall. Now, granted, the second and third movies, eh, the fourth movie, I don't even, I don't, I don't know why they made it, but that first movie, bro, it gave me goosebumps, bro. Like, I, I think I, I legit, that's one of the few movies in my life. Now, I don't watch a lot of movies more than once. Like, it, it can be on my list, but I'm like, I'm like, but I think the Matrix overall, though, I think I've seen it like 10, 10 plus times. Like nonstop, ten plus times easily. Now you mentioned the Matrix. Um, obviously, you mentioned Mission Impossible. I think at some point we're going to have some crossover in our list, and we're going to have some repeat for sure. So it happens. That, yeah, you just took one of mine. You just, which is which works out. I mean, maybe we go back to the draft, so then you take it off your list, and people can't repeat it. But... <laughs> These are our personal favorite 10 lists. So for our listeners and viewers, if you hear repeat, yo, did he say it already? We can repeat on this episode. We just changed it up, had it a little bit different for y'all. 
Next on my list, you mentioned Tom Cruise. I'm not going to mention, you know, you got to have Tom Cruise. You got to mention Top Gun Maverick. That definitely is on my list as one of my favorite action okay. movies. And again, the second one, we've talked about this before in other episodes. The sequel is actually better than the first one. And that's very that rare. Actually, though. You know, it's very rare that you see the sequel is better than the first one. So I agree with Miles and Kwame has said the same thing. Tom Cruise across the board, whatever genre, one of one of the goats. One of you see his name in the dictionary next to actors, and it says him as a pronoun. So definitely Tom Cruise for sure. Miles, back to you. <laughs> he him, yeah, he he is him. Um I don't know if I said it, but um, Matt Damon, those Born Supremacy, Born Ultimatum movies, those were on point. I think those are those movies where it, it's kind of like the Bond sort of thing, like James Bond action, a lot of trying to solve something. Like he's trying to figure out what's going on, his memory, all this stuff. Those movies, the fighting, the action, top tier, like that was young Matt Damon in his prime. So uh, I definitely put, uh, I think the Born Ultimatum was my favorite one of the the three. I remember that series. My, my mom put me on Born. I remember sitting down, watching that in the living room. I'm like, oh, this is lit. Born. And then I was locked in every single one after that. I'm trying to get Nikki on it, but she ain't, it, it didn't really spark her interest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go, Kwame. All right. <clears throat> I think, uh, dang, man. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. All right. Everybody know they can, everybody saw this movie. I know everybody, someone probably has in list two. Taken. No? Not on my list. Not on my list. I'm like, bro, there's no way, bro. Taken? <laughs> yeah, that's another movie. Another movie. Like, like I said, I don't watch a lot of movies more than once, but I think I've definitely seen Taken at least five, six times. Bro, Taken was a, a bomb movie when it came out. The first one, not the second one, third one. Anything after the first one is trash. But the first one, though, when the when the, the concept was still pretty new, bruh, dope movie. I'm like, yo, th- this dude is literally out here trying to get his daughter back. Like, he, he, my man done. Yo, when he <laughs> when he called her, or when, when she called him, and he's listening on the phone. No, wait, did, he, did, did she call him or did he call her? I remember. Nevertheless, though, when he plays back the, the, the recording, hears her screaming and all that, he's over here processing everything in his head, playing back all the scenes. I'm like, bro, this, this dude is crazy. <laughs> the what? Like, I'll go get her. I'm like, what do you mean you can go get her? She's in another country. What, bro, what are you talking about? Then he, he, I mean, he really does go get, he, he doesn't get her. But, bro, bro the, the scenes in that movie were crazy, bro. The action, the, the, the thrill, loved it, bro. The, the one scene in the movie, my favorite scene, I know this is probably gonna be a little crazy. My favorite scene is when he's torturing the guy. So um, after he finds out uh, that the house that she was staying at, with the red door, or whatever, he he takes out everybody in the in the entire house, finds the one dude, keeps him alive. Then he puts the nails in his hands and and then he electrocutes him. Bro, I'm like, yo, this dude is crazy. I don't know why they want to mess with this dude, but bro, Taken, bro, loved that movie. Hey. Liam Neeson. Definitely de- defined. I mean, pause. Let me run that back. Lee Neeson definitely killed the role. I, I don't think he's an action star per se, but that movie it- itself definitely was dope. I was about to say. I think after that, I don't recall any movie that he hasn't done that isn't a version of Taken, even if the title isn't Taken. Now, l- legit, like taken on taken on the train. Like, like, bro, this is this train taken. Like, no, Liam, and I got like I need you to stop now. All right, now we, we get it. You he took something. Uh, he was a Taliban. I mean, I, I guess they're like, bro. We'll it worked. How much, how much am I getting? Yeah, I'll do it. Yeah, I'll do it. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't care. <laughs> like, bro. Like, all right, now. Like, all right, Liam. Like, I get it now. You, you took something. All right, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I throw on there for my list uh, Godzilla vs. Kong, the new empire. I think that was a lot of action. Um, for me, I love the visuals. I love, I don't know if it was CGI, but whatever it was, absolutely beautifully done. Um, I love the cast of the people that actually was on there. You know, obviously Godzilla ain't speaking, 
So King Kong ain't speaking, which I do appreciate. Um, I didn't make it where like they actually have voices and stuff like that. So I got that on my list. Miles, what's on what's on your list? By the way, taken Nikki. I asked Nikki. I was like, "Yo, what comes to mind when you think about action movies?" She said, "Taken." Exactly. That's right. That, Nick, Nikki, you're a real one. I told you, bro. Um, for me, I would put Avengers Endgame. I think that movie there that was like peak, that was peak Marvel. I think that was ever since then. It's kind of just been downhill, and now you see they're trying to bring back. Uh, Downey Jr. as Doctor Doom, trying to revive the the franchise. We'll see if it works, you know. But like Endgame, that was one of those where I don't know anybody who hasn't seen it or didn't see it when it first came out. Um, Thanos, most hated guy or whatever he is at the time, um, and then the iconic scene of them all just walking through the rings at the end. Um, crazy, crazy scenes. Okay, okay, okay. All right, all right. My turn next, I'm assuming. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm going to go with... Whoo, I'm going to go with Fast Five. Fast Nobody five. had a list? It's not on my list, but I like Fast what? Five. What? Yo, yo, it's another one, bro. How does no one have Fast Five? Fast Five is hands down. The best Fast and Furious movie in the franchise, hands down, bro. Like before Fast Five, I promise you, I did not care about Fast and Furious. After Fast Five, I'm like, bro, this this is this movie is crazy, bro. You got the Rock in there, you got Vin Diesel there over here stealing a a, a safe in Brazil. I'm like, bro, first <laughs> of all, how y'all still like how y'all go from take from from being like car driving uh, hooligans to to being bank robbers now? Well, I, whatever, I'll, I'll take it. Bro, mad action. You got classic Vin Diesel. Yeah, guys, we gotta, we gotta go do this. Yeah, vroom, vroom. I'm like, all right, cool, whatever, whatever man. I'll, I'll take it, bro, bro. Fast Five, though, legit. I, 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 like, I loved it. I think I watched that movie a couple times, too. Bro, that's not think about it. I gotta stop saying I don't, I don't watch a lot of movies over and over again because that, that's actually one of them I watched a couple times, too. But, yo, le- legit, though, um... Like I, I don't know how anyone could could not have Fast Five on the top of their their Fast and Furious list, not necessarily the top movies, but Fast and Furious list. If Fast Five isn't is on the list, I don't I don't know I don't I don't know what was wrong with you. Wait, <laughs> wait, that's the one with uh, Bow Wow, right? I don't I don't remember him. If if he wasn't that movie, no no whoa 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 Miles bro whoa run that back. No, I know I'm I'm messing with you. Bruh. <laughs> I was like, wait, bow wow, that was Tokyo Drift. <laughs> no. Thank God, bro. Thank God I didn't put him back in another movie. I'm like, bro, bow wow? <laughs> nah, my, nah. We, 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 we took an L on that one. I, I hate Tokyo Drift. Hey, real but quick. Yeah. It's not it's not on the show, but you mentioned you mentioned Bow Wow. Who do you think between uh, what comes to mind, who do you think is the best rapper turned actor? Best rapper turned actor, Will Smith. Oh, yeah. Just had to ask. Some people wouldn't consider him a rapper, but I, I get it. I mean, I saw it somewhere. Like he was the first. He won the first rap Grammy. So I mean, he's got Grammys. So a lot of guys can't say that. I mean, I would say though, because I've heard I would do the answers. I've heard Ludacris. Ludacris has made a nice lane. Uh, Fifty Cent has done a little something, something. You know. I would say fifty. Fifty over. I would say fifty. Probably for me would be number one. I think his his characters are more uh, realistic and believable. Like Luda, like I, I feel like he can act, but like it's it's it, like I, it's I don't think he's bad. an actor when I, when I see him. It, huh? it's, a certain, it's a certain bag with Luda. Like he can't go. Uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like fifty, like fifty. I, I can see fifty. Like I mean, when all of those I've seen him in our serious roles, but I, I can see him doing that. Like all right, cool. I'm I'm okay, I'm okay with that. But Luda, but nah, I, I can do Luda. But yeah. I think uh, if he stayed alive, definitely would have been in a conversation when really, 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 really good Tupac. I think he would have been really oh, good if he actually, yeah. you know, didn't die. But that's a, another conversation. Keeping it in that Marvel Universe that Miles mentioned, I'm going to have to throw up there. And it's been already been, I had some choices that Kwame is like, uh, yucky or yum. But Logan? 
I got Logan up there. Logan, okay. Hugh Jackman. Oh, okay. Hugh Jackman, I think, is the best Wolverine. Um, and in that movie, boy, he was on he was on a spree. Anybody and everybody could get it. You wasn't messing with Wolverine and that. And for me personally, that's one of my favorite Marvel characters in general is Wolverine. Like growing up, that was one of my favorite ever was Wolverine. When we actually growing up, actually did celebrate Halloween. You know, I had to get this, had the gloves with the claws and all that. Mm, yeah, yeah, we was we was lit with Wolverine. <laughs> that's just that's just me. Miles, back to you. I know we didn't mention it yet, um, but the Equalizer. I think Dang it. Dang it. the the first one, the first one by far. That one, not ex- not knowing what to expect, like, but he was on some straight Book of Eli. Stuff right there. Um, coming out as this guy who he's working at Home Depot. You don't, you know, fifty-five years old. Maybe you don't think he's gonna kill ten Russians and you know stopwatch carry to ten eighteen seconds. You don't think he's gonna do all that. But Denzel, he never ceases to amaze any any project that he he does. So I'm looking forward to the one uh, Gladiators two that's coming out too. But like Equalizer. That was, it's not like, I wouldn't say that's like one of his best roles, but like action wise, like I think as it went on, him and uh, forget uh, Fuqua, they they know what they're doing. Oh, for sure. Equalizer was on my list also. So when I come up, I ain't going, I'm not even going to repeat it. Definitely <clears throat> Robert McCall. Yes, sir. Robert McCall equalizer. First one, like you said, the first one the absolute best one but if they go if they go drop six of them i'm seeing all six i'm I'm watching anything denzel's in like you said gladiator 2 he making that same face that oh shoot that that same face that we that one right there oh yeah i'm watching gladiator 2 for sure anything denzel in sign me up give me a ticket or you know the, the site we was talking about earlier but uh kwame you uh you back up all right, so I was going to choose Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol, specifically Ghost Protocol. That's when he goes to, to Dubai. But because uh, Miles said Ghost Protocol, I'm going to actually go to one of my uh, my alternates, which is, I'm going to say uh, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Ooh. Yeah, bro. That mo- legit, though. That movie was amazing, bro, from the storyline to the artwork to like a legit like I, I didn't want to end when it when it when it started to be honest with you because I'm like bro it's it's almost over like it, like how's it almost over no nah, no nah, you gotta keep going right but, but no legit like I love the movie um I love to see like Miles like develop into, into his own version of Spider Man it kind of sucked uh you know that the action didn't you know the action wasn't action in towards the end because I'm like man it's, it's only take like five minutes come on man I, I need like a twenty minute action scene but bro <laughs> love that movie overall though. Um, I actually can't wait to, to uh, the part three comes out. I thought part two was pretty dope too, although a lot of people said they didn't like part two as much. But I'm like, bro, I, I think overall it's been pretty consistent for me. Like I, I you know, I, I keep both, but yeah, it's inspired for definitely. Yeah, I thought it's been pretty consistent too. That's a great pick right there. I'm going to go with just I'm gonna just throw it out there so y'all don't end up mentioning it. One of my favorite, probably top of my list, The Dark Knight. We've talked about The Dark Knight okay. plenty of times on the show. It, we're not even going to dive that back into it, but we already know. Heath Ledger, the best Batman probably we've seen, the best Joker, Dark Knight, hands down, action, one of my favorite top ones ever. Quick question for you, though. Did you see the last Batman movie or no? Yeah, I did. You like it? That was good. I liked it. It's like a dark, it was like a dark version. Like, uh, the Christian Bale ones, those are kind of like, it doesn't, let me see, let me find my words. The one that came out most recently, like, there's a, a edge to this Batman that's, like, different from some of the other ones. Kind of like, um, it's like a punk, punk Batman, basically. That's what it feels like. Okay. I ain't gonna lie to you. I didn't watch it. I was like, mm, do I want to, do I want to? Don't want to cheat on Kristen Bell with, with some other dude? Nah. <laughs> he did a good job, though. He did a good job. 
I, I was shocked was. when I saw he was being Batman. I was like, the, the dude from the guy who was you know sparkling in Twilight. I can't. Yeah. I don't know. I, don't, I can't take him serious. But he did his thing. He did his thing. Nah, he did surprisingly. Surprisingly, yeah, he he definitely did. Like like Miles said, I kind of was like you said, kind of like eh, I don't know. I don't know if I want to watch this. I'm cool with the Dark Knight, but if I had to give it like out of five stars, as you know, movie critics do, which. At some point, maybe when I hit 70, you know, I'm going to be getting paid to be a movie critic. I give it about like a, a four out of five stars. Four out of five. What? Yeah. Let me check it out then. I, I hesitated, though. I hesitated after Ben Affleck, Batman, because I was like, I'm not feeling this guy. I'm not feeling You know it. what? Honestly speaking, I don't think it was it was that bad. I was like, this ain't the best Batman, but he not. Yo, people making it seem like Ben Affleck's like, like he did like a horrible, horrible job. I'm like, he did all right. You know, he did all right. <laughs> What he have to do? Miles, back to your pick. Uh, all right. So I'm gonna do Lord of the Rings. I remember in college, I I binged that. I had an off day, and I binged the whole series, which basically took me all day. Didn't leave the dorm room for whatever reason. You know, young, dumb. You're like, you know what? I'm gonna watch all these movies right now. Who cares? But these are like four hour movies, so you gotta really be locked in to watch some of these. But like Frodo, The Shire, all these mythical like I like those those fantasy sort of movies like that where I mean that stuff that stuff's not real, but like them fighting ogres in the woods and you know, guys looking like Zelda out here doing their thing. <laughs> I'm like that's 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 what I like. I like those those type of movies. So that like Lord of the Rings, The Hobbit, those were like great great films. Okay, okay, I hear you. I hear you. All right, I'm gonna keep it moving. Ooh, we getting into that top four, top five territory. Um, I'm gonna go with. Oh, here we go. Kill Bill. Kill Bill, bruh. Uma Thurman killed that role in those movies, bruh. Legit. <laughs> If if anyone watching this video has not seen Kill Bill for any reason, <laughs> I don't know why. Why why would you not want to see that movie? Uma Thurman, bro, she's well. I wasn't really messing with her before that until like you know, I saw her role. But bro, her playing as as her as the title character or whatever, crazy, bro. And like <sighs> the amount of of gore, <laughs> the amount of gore, bro, in that movie is crazy. Especially uh, in the one fight scene when she's in, in Japan and she's fighting like a hundred dudes, bro. There's arms flying everywhere. People getting arms cut off, legs. And at the end, she's like, bro, anyone who's alive, you can leave. Leave your limbs. I was like, bro, what do you mean leave your limbs, bro? What? Bro, crazy, crazy movie, bro. And I love Quentin Tarantino's style altogether, too. Bro, I, I was like, I was hoping for like a part three, but you know, of course, they didn't do that. But you know, whatever. Yeah, Quentin Tarantino. Some of those movies, he in his bag. Some of them, right? But most of his movies, he he in his bag for sure. Uh, what's that one with? Um, it was a real wild one because his mind, the way he thinks, is wild. But what's the one where? Um, Dango? hateful, hateful eight. Oh, oh hateful. yes, bro. Yes, that was. Like, Hateful Eight was a dope movie. I'm like, bro, Quentin Tarantino, like, legit, I don't, to me, I don't think he misses. Like, bro, this, this dude, like, back, whenever he puts a movie out, it's going to be good. Wasn't that, was that, a, uh, wasn't it a remake, though, right? Hateful Eight? Was it a remake? I thought it was original. That's a good question. I feel it was like a movie that was made in, like, the 60s or something like that. I feel he remade it and obviously uh, upgraded it. That's just that's just me. It's just seen. It's just when you see a Quentin Tarantino movie. Yeah, there was one in uh. No, nah, I think that might be the original. That's nah, original. Yeah, it's an original movie. Okay, it's just with Quentin Tarantino. I think it's an acquired taste in regards of what the stuff that you may see is different. It, the, the best way to put is different, like. Some of those scenes in there uh, where uh, Samuel Jackson made the dude give him oral in the snowstorm, I was like, "Yeah, dude, Quentin Tarantino, he going, he going, <laughs> he going to stretch." Like, 
What's, he gonna push. what's the worst that you could probably do right now? Yeah, yeah that, that's it. He going to push the borders like Django. So when those scenes in here, you're like, um, I mean, you even saw his, uh, the character. He's like, I don't know if I'm comfortable saying the N-word this many times. Like, I don't, I don't know. He's going to push every single line. He's going to push it straight to that last point. So that that's all I got to say with Quentin. Everything he does, like I said, I like. It's just once you watch it, be prepared. It's going to it's going to. Uh, it's not gonna be like anything you've normally seen. Next on my list, like you said, we get to the, the last couple ones. I'm gonna have to put in there the accountant, Christian Wolf. The accountant, the guy that literally, and it's another one coming out this year, and I'm locked in to watch the accountant too. Really good if you haven't seen it. Pretty much the synopsis is it's a guy that's a certified personal accountant in a small little town, but come to find out he's actually an accountant for some pretty pretty rough crime organizations and he seems like you know just a regular normal nine to five guy but this man he was put in harm to a lot of a lot of people he was a certified you might say certified killer forget certified uh certified accountant he was a certified killer so the accountant's definitely top on my list uh miles what's next up for you uh the kingsman uh those movies different those are different those those like british films with you know the secret society of uh of gentlemen um i think they even made what is it the gentleman that came out on Mm -hmm. netflix the the tv show which like i think Mm -hmm. is similar to that but very um, long them like having guns out of umbrellas and doing like wild stuff like that i'm like this this is creative this could come in handy one day you know you it might be raining or you could make it rain. Like I, that, I, I really enjoyed those films um, and the shootout scenes. And um, yeah, I'm putting Kingsman on my uh, my list. Hey, I was telling somebody, right? I was telling somebody, British, British movies and TVs probably over the last 10, 15 years, because I wasn't watching stuff before that. But the last 10, 15 years of my life, they food might not be good, but they TV lit. I agree. They, British stuff don't be missing at all. And I'll explain on, on my list of TV shows this year. British don't be missing with stuff at all. All right. I hear you. I, I agree, actually. I, like, I, like, I watch a lot of international shows, too, so I definitely agree. Um. All right. So you're number three, right? So I'm going to go with right number three or four. I'm going to go with, uh, oh, yeah, there we go. Dragon Ball Super Brawly. Now, I, I had to throw some anime in there because I'm like, bro, nah, I, I think my top 10, Dragon Ball Z definitely falls in my top 10 overall. But, yeah, Dragon Ball Z Super, though. So, essentially, Dragon Ball Z, uh, Dragon Ball Super Brawly is just a remake of the classic Dragon Ball Z, you know, uh, movie with Brawly in it. But they gave Brawly a whole different, uh, Gave Bali a whole different look. They gave him a whole new backstory. You got Goku. You got Vegeta in there. You got Frieza. Bruh, when I say the fight scenes in that movie are amazing, I actually watched it today with my brother. I'm like, bruh, pull up real quick. Some of the most amazing choreography and, and fighting. You got power. You got people blocking punches. You got people getting slams into brick. You got power blasts going everywhere. Goku's going super saiyan. It's not enough. Of course, it's never enough because, you know, it's Goku. <laughs> so they, they got they got to figure out something else to do, bro. It's a, it is an amazing movie, bro. Visually, I don't know who who drew it. I don't I don't know. If it, no, actually, no. I, I think it's it's a three D and drawn. But whoever did it was a genius. They should get paid more money, bro. But definitely, Dragon Ball Z, uh, Dragon Ball Super Brawly, is an amazing masterpiece in my personal you know uh, perspective. You should definitely watch it. <laughs> You might have to check it out. I wasn't allowed to watch Dragon Ball Z growing up, but I just knew everybody was in uh, school talking. So, come come how? <laughs> exactly, bro. It's nostalgic <laughs> and it's good. Yeah, I have to. I probably have to check it out because, like I said, I wasn't allowed to watch Dragon Ball Z growing up. I just saw everybody in school doing come and come how. Kids in the classroom like I'm about to go Super Saiyan on you. I'm like I don't know what they talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Miles, you, you, well, we got like two more left. Yeah, like two more pigs left. Miles, what's uh next on yours? 
You muted, by the way. I thought it was you. Oh, word. You, you just went. Kwame, my bad. That's right. Um, I'm going to throw salt on there. Angelina Jolie, her role in salt. Very, very, very good. Is she, is she a Russian spy? Is she not? The storyline was good. The action, her, anybody and everybody could get it. The shooting, the running through the town, the city, hopping over this, hopping over that. Backflips. Yeah. Angelina Jolie and Salt. Another one of her action movies. I think I personally like her and Salt more than Mr. and Mrs. Smith, as in the action aspect. Because um, she got to be, she was the main person. She's the leading person. I went back and watched the trailer. The trailer back, I think that came out in 2010. They ain't named no other actor on there. It just said Angelina Jolie. And it was, <laughs> other, it was some other actors on there. But the trailer ended with Angelina Jolie. Nobody else got no burn on that. So shout out to that one. So that was her solo work in a sense. Um, not depending on uh and Mr. And Mrs. Smith, but Miles. All right, on my list, I'm running out of names for for my list, but I'm gonna go Mad Max, Fury Road. Um of course those those Mad Max movies are gonna be full of action. It just feels like they're just driving these crazy cars the whole film trying to shoot each other and you're in the desert there's no water like you're just like what the hell is this but like that movie it was just non-stop action because they literally he's always good in in his roles so um i give him credit like he he switches it up um mad max different okay 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 i hear you nah actually that's it was, was a pretty good movie i actually need to watch a new one i think this came out recently i check that out i think um, it's a coming out this year ain't it it came out already it came out like last month i think oh uh, mad max I missed, Furiosa? It. I missed it now nah, you gotta take it out bro i heard it's pretty, I, I actually saw some uh, reviews but it looks pretty good yeah it's pretty good all right we getting up to those well, top three right it's top three right now i don't know Right. It's like the bond. It's like our last two picks, because, like for example, we got some repeats. I'm not gonna say equalize. I don't need to say it no more. So, you feel what I'm saying? So we got like two more picks left. All right, cool, 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 cool. I'm gonna go with. Oh, here we go. It's, it's an international. It have to come. All right, I'm gonna go with a movie called Train to Busan. It's a Korean movie, mm. bro. Not only is it action packed, it's also heartwarming. So essentially, premise. Um. Essentially, it's the zombie apocalypse, right? And this, this dude, he's a father. He has to go get his daughter, right? On the other side of Korea, whatever she was, she's with her mom. So my man is on a train to go get his daughter. Now, some craziness happens because, you know, like I said, it's a zombie apocalypse. So, you know, there's going to be people getting bit, people trying to, like, live, survive, or whatever. A lot of action throughout this entire movie, bro. Um, like I said, it's kind of heartfelt. Uh, Cause you know it, it kind of shows a, a, what a father is willing to do for his child in a zombie apocalypse. <laughs> but bro, love that movie, bro. It's always my top list. Um, my my top movies like I recommend to people, um, especially if it's like you know foreign. Like hey, check out Train to Busan. But bro, Tony, when you when you have time, check it out. Most definitely, I'm gonna check that one out. Uh, my last one that I'll say on here, Colombiana, Zoe Saldana. And Colombiana, a storyline of you mentioned of what a father will do for his child, what a child will do for you murdering my parents. She went, she went buck wild. Everybody and anybody could get it, and she did it in such a smooth way. Play you like, oh yeah, you know that scene where she make it seem like she about to give man's love, and then he in the pool. Yeah. Colombiana definitely is, <laughs> definitely is on the top of my list. Miles and Kwame, if y'all got one more left, y'all can bring it off. All right. I got, I'll go with Heat with uh, De Niro and Al Pacino. Um, that was, on my list. That was definitely, list. when I saw that for the first time, I'm like, yo, this is crazy. It's like cat and mouse. And then you get, you get the iconic <laughs> shootout after the bank robbery towards the end of the movie. And you're just like, this is crazy. Like this feels so real. And I think I even saw, what was it? You know, Twitter always posts like stuff about films, 
but they were saying that they use that shootout scene in training Marines nowadays. They they have oh, them really? watch that scene because of how realistic and kind of to a T of how you're supposed to do it protocol wise. Um, but I mean, like De Niro, Pacino, two of the greatest actors of all time. And whenever they're in a film together, it's, you know, it's easy, the chemistry they have. Like, I just think back to the back and forth when they're at the diner and it's kind of like they're baiting each other to see what's going to happen next. And just, you just get so many iconic scenes in that, that movie, but, but heat definitely one of those, uh, great action films. All right, all right. Yo, that, that, that. That's crazy that you said that, bro. Legit, I promise you, it was on my list. I took it off, though, so I'm like, bro, <laughs> I was trying to figure out if, if like, yo, is this action enough, though? Because I'm, I'm, I'm like, yo, this is more like a thriller crime, right? Like, I don't know. They had, like, the, you know, like you said, they have the shootout scene. I'm like, ah, oh, I, I don't know if I took it off. But I do have one better, though, I think, all right? Y'all, y'all can tell me if I'm wrong. James Bond, specifically, though, Casino Royale with Daniel Craig when he first when That's he crazy. first started being James Bond, bro. Yo, you couldn't tell that man nothing, bro. I'm like, yo, yeah, this is this is James Bond, and like this is peak James Bond, bro. Like, I I think like but before him, Prince Brosnan, I'm like, hey, he all right. But Daniel Craig, though, yo, I was like, yo, this is how James Bond should be, bro. First of all, not only is this dude big, yo, but this dude was swole. I'm like, bro, is he on Roy's? I don't know. Whatever, whatever James got to do to get the job done, whatever. You, you can shoot up whatever you gotta do, James. Whatever, I, I, don't, I don't care. Whatever, just just when when you have to. But bro, yo, I love that movie, bro. I love like how he how suave he was. I think one of my most uh, one of the favorites, my, my one of my favorite scenes from the entire movie is where he getting tortured. <laughs> oh shoot! When he's getting tortured, um, and they take they take the bottom off the chair, and they're hitting him. I'm like, oh, bro, like, oh, I was cringing, like, bro, that's crazy. And he still made it out, though. He still made it out. And in the end, he was like, all right, bro, I, I got you. And, and lo and behold, at the end, you, you got him. <laughs> but, bro, love Casino Royale. I love how, like, Daniel Craig kind of, like, reinvented James Bond overall. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I think that's, that's, my, that's my, not my number one. I got a couple honorable mentions, but that's another one. Definitely. That's, that's crazy. Because that was, like, the next movie I was going to say, I was between, like, saying either Heat or Casino Royale. So, bro. And look at you. See, look, look, look at the Lord. He was like, I'll, I'll Quam, don't worry about it. He'll take heat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right well, we, before we go to our uh, top two shows of this year, you said you had some honorable mentions. Like, what, what comes to mind for your honorable mentions? Oh, easy. Uh, I got Captain America Civil War. Bruh. Captain America overall, I hated the first movie. Uh, Winter Soldier was dope, but I think Civil War. I don't know. I, I don't know what, what it did for me, but Civil War, when you had, like, two teams fighting each other, you got Iron Man, War Machine, you got, you got them all fighting, just to make sure that Bucky... Captain America was trying to protect Bucky, because he's like, that's, that's my boy, what you mean? That's my boy, I'm not leaving him. Bruh, I love I love how they're, like, you know, they're fighting, just, even though they don't necessarily have to, but they're just fighting. I, I love it. I love that at the end of the movie, especially, bruh, when Captain America and Bucky double-team Iron Man, bruh, Oh, like yo, this is this is like <laughs> this is what happens. You know what I'm saying, this definition of bro, you got me, you got me right. Yeah, I got you, bro. And then and, and they, they they took care of Iron Man. They were like this, this that they were molly whopping. They were molly whopping Iron Man, bro. I'm like Iron Man, bro. You good? But yeah, uh, I got that. I got um Deadpool, bro. Marvel for a while, like yo Marvel. Actually, wait, Deadpool was Sony at the time. Whatever. Anyway, but yo Marvel movies. For a while, yo, they they were pretty good, bro. I'm like, yo, Deadpool was amazing when it first came out. That's why I'm kind of excited to see Deadpool Wolverine because you know you oh, got yeah. Ryan Reynolds, you got Hugh Jackman, the best Wolverine. I'm like, bro, this is a match made in heaven. You you can't go wrong. You well, pause. I'm a... I like they can't go wrong, but they sh- they they shouldn't go wrong. This this is a this is an easy layup. Like if you don't if you don't make the money off this movie, something's wrong, bro. But the first Deadpool when it first came out. It was yo, bro. It was legit. It was a good movie. I'm like, yo, like they should have done this years ago. Like, why didn't they do this years ago? You got Ryan Reynolds with his classic Ryan Reynolds. You know what I'm saying? His his little snarky comments here and there. You got Deadpool, which was he himself is snarky in the comic books. So you got those two put together, match made in heaven again, bro. 
And then the overall storyline was pretty good storyline. Granted, I kind of wish they could do more because, you know, at the time, Sony had dead right to Deadpool, so they couldn't like do too much. Now that Marvel got it, bruh, the sky's the limit now. Like, legit, the sky's the limit. Um, you said, oh, there's one more, actually. There's one more, um, another international film called The Raid. Huh? No? Never heard bruh, of it. You haven't seen The Raid? Yo, The Raid is crazy. Now, there's a dude, essentially, overall premise, I'll run, run through real quick, you know what I'm saying? You got a cop who goes to a, a, an apartment building run by, like, gangsters, right? It's like thugs, gangsters, all that. And he has to make his way to the top. And he's clearing out, out the building floor by floor. And it, this ain't like, nah, he's, like, molly whopping people, bro. Kicking, you, you see drop kicks, you see people getting flipped, tossed, everything, bro. This is a crazy concept, bro. Kicking people through windows, all that stuff. Yeah, I'm like, bro, he didn't just do that. Run that back, bro. It's a crazy movie, bro. You get you like like legit. If you haven't seen the raid, you gotta watch the raid, bro. You gotta watch the raid. If if, if there's anything I, that I said, only pay attention to the raid. <laughs> watch the raid. Come back. <laughs> all right, top TV shows of this year. I'll start it off that way. Y'all don't repeat none of the ones that I said. So I'm gonna start off with this. My top TV shows that this year, Supercell came out recently. Shout out again to the British TV, Supercell, hands down. I don't care what else comes out this year. It's going to be in my top three TV shows this year, regardless. Can't wait. Hopefully, they actually get a second season. I was reading it, might not get a second season, but the guy that wrote it, he got three seasons, three seasons already written. He ready. Y'all just <laughs> sign me the check, and I. I got it already lined up for you. Second one, Apple TV does not miss, bro. I mean, Apple TV does not miss at all. They 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 they, they just don't miss. Dark Matter is on my list from this year. Dark Matter's up there, and it's a couple more that's going to be coming back. And I know one that's on Miles' list. Apple TV. If y'all want to get a subscription for anything. Apple TV is the one to get. And last telling, one, I was telling Kwame. Last one I have to put up there. It was not this year that it came out, but it's the season. I think it's season three or four came out this year. What? The Bear. Yes. Oh. This season, granted, y'all put me on to The Bear, and then I binged it, and then I literally binged it right in time. Because the next season came out like the very next day, and I was like, Oh, yeah, we lit it. I'm already <laughs> here, we locked in the bear. Yes, I put that in one of my if we ever do an episode again with like our favorite TV shows, the bear is already on my list of favorite TV shows of all time. They really be having me in the house by myself, talking about, Yes, chef, yes, chef, cooking everything. <laughs> Miles, your top three uh, shows this year. Uh, like you said, Apple TV does not miss. Um, I'm going to go with Presumed Innocent. Final episode just ended this week, I think Thursday or Wednesday. It doesn't matter. But uh, Jake Gyllenhaal, great actor. He's been doing his thing for years now. Um, and crazy thing is he's not even the best actor in the show like one of the other two like lawyers their role in this pff, they it blew me away how how good this show was and each episode had you like on the edge of your seat and of course they're releasing it uh week to week so you have to wait a whole week to figure out okay what happened what happened next like who who did it who did it you're, you're trying to figure out who did it um all right let me move on <laughs> uh true detective Night Country, I think that one, I don't know if, like, we all agree on this, but, like, the True Detectives, I don't think they've missed on any of the seasons. Of course, the Matthew McConaughey one, season one, was by far the best one because that was, that was dark. And it was unbelievable how, like, deep they got in that role. But this one, this one, this uh, year that came out, so good. Um, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, 
I think that was a nice twist on the movie that we've seen in the past, like from Brad and Angelina. Now you got uh, Donald Glover. Doesn't go by Childish Gambino anymore. Donald Glover. Uh, he he adds a little spice to it. He makes it funny. He adds like the humor aspect of it to it. Because like, that's kind of what you expect out of like a Donald Glover led show. Like we've all seen Atlanta. We know how great Atlanta was. And I don't think he missed on this one. Like he, of course there was action. There was plenty of uh, gore in it, but there were moments where it's like, it's like a true couple where it's like banter, funny, all that stuff. So, um, and then one more, I'll just, I know I'm going over my limit, but Tokyo Vice, that was one of mine from uh, HBO Max uh, that I think the third season came out this year. Either second or third, I forget. I think it might be the second. Third season. Third, third season. season. Um, when I stumbled on that, when I was you know scrolling through Max, I'm just like, hmm, Ch- Tokyo Vice. It's got this white guy in here, but you know he's not Japanese, so let me see what it's hitting for. And like he knows how to speak Japanese. He's good at it. He's a lawyer, uh, not a lawyer. He's a a journalist, and he's right in the mix. Um, and I think it's like loosely based off of like true events that happen. So that's another thing that I like about it is like those movies or shows that are like loosely based off something makes it even more um, enjoyable. Kwame. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm going to start off. I had the bear, but no, I'm not going to say that again. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with three body problem. Three body problem. Bruh, legit. I heard. A bunch of people talking about this show uh, early in the year. I'm like, yeah, what are they talking about? I'm not going to watch it, though. But I watched it recently. Bruh, that show is pretty good. Essentially, overall, you got an alien you got an alien invasion happening on the DL. I'm like, wait, what? What? So uh, overall premise, though, they start playing this game. They find out that, that the game is actually made by aliens. The aliens are, are going to come invade Earth. There's a lot of, of you know science talk and mystery happening all over. It was really it was actually really dope. Um, you got oh you got another uh, another show coming up. Uh, I think the, the new season coming out later this year in September called From. If anyone has ever seen Lost, no, maybe Miles. Tell me, no. I want to get into it. I never saw it when it was out, but I've heard like good things about it up until like the last season. Of course, that's usually what happens. All right. Well, it's it's essentially I think the same people. It's kind of gives you give you lost vibes. Essentially, um, I just like the show a lot. So uh, overall, these these people get stuck in a town, and in the town, some crazy stuff happens. They can't leave. Um, there there's these these things that come out at night and get them. Um, there's like a lot of mystery going on here. A lot of like like strange things happening over there. So it's a really dope actually. I, I like that the actors are, are actually pretty pretty phenomenal. Um, then I got a, another show on, on Netflix that came out early this year called um, another show called The Gentleman. Uh, it's about a guy, <laughs> a guy who uh, who inherits his father's estate, <laughs> and then he finds out that they're growing weed on his estate. <laughs> he finds out his father was, had some dealing with some drug dealers. And he, he wants to get rid of him, but uh, overall, like, he finds it harder and harder to actually get rid of him. And then they, they start making, like, deals and trying to, like, you know, try to figure things out. It was, it was actually a pretty good show. It was another British show. Shout out to the UK. Boop, boop, boop. But yeah, bro. <laughs> bro, I love that show overall, though. I, I'm actually hoping, hoping that they make a part two or a season two of it, hopefully, in, uh, in the near future. Yeah. All right, we close off the show with this. Each of y'all give me one. TV show or movie that you would suggest outside of all the ones that we've already suggested because I know Kwame gave people a couple good suggestions. Anything outside of that that y'all would suggest to watch? I got Old or new? Um, if you haven't Paramount, if you do, if you got Paramount Plus, check out the show called Tulsa King. Yeah. It's uh, Sylvester Stallone. Um, he plays a. a a drug dealer, or was he? Was he, was he a drug kingpin? He got forcefully moved to Tulsa, Oklahoma, He's trying to start his own empire up in, in Oklahoma. You know, he has to deal with like the rival gangs. He got to deal with like you know people back home telling him what, what he can and can't do. He wants to be his own boss. So overall, it's kind of like how he's essentially rising to be the king of Tulsa. But um, I think a pretty for the most part though, it's pretty good acting. 
Sylvester Stallone, if you're into his kind of acting, you know, I'll give it a check out now I'm saying, because I know A by nine to you know him, me. Because <laughs> A by nine might not be into that. But I think overall, that was a pretty good show, though. So just get over his acting. Yeah, you'd have to get over it. I was just saying, Nick, you finally started this. I think it's more nostalgic, but them Rocky movies, throw them jokers in the trash, bro. <laughs> Damn. Right. Hey, man. Hey, throw that throw that crap in the trash. The action was oh, terrible. Rocky. It wasn't believable. Yeah, Ma, you could go, but I can't stand him even in the expendables. We if we could just cut his part out. Just cut his part out. You could replace him with me for all you can, but Sylvester Stallone as an actor, good lord. To be a to be a white man in America. <laughs> Uh, let me see. I know what was it? Jack Ryan finished up this year. That was I like that one with uh, dude from The Office. Well, you didn't. You wasn't feeling it. All right. So here's so here's my. I got a couple of thoughts on, on Jack Ryan. Right. So I, I liked it initially. Don't get me wrong. I liked it initially. I liked the first. I watched the first two seasons. But I'm like, wait. All right, guys. Wait, 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 wait. You want me to believe that this random analyst? <laughs> that that has zero field work, that has real field knowledge, is man to save the day all the time. All right, guys, come on, man. What? What? So I'm like, all right, I, I guess, I, I guess, but I'm like, bro, y'all, y'all had nobody better, nobody. Come on, Ryan, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta save the day. Come on, man. <laughs> come on, man. <laughs> um, but I'll go with the old man if. I'm recommending anything. I don't know if you guys have seen it. It's with Jeff Bridges it's on uh, FX. Oh, okay. Came out a couple years ago. Um, he's like this uh, somewhat retired CIA dude who's like real badass. Like he's some dude in his 60s. And there's this big secret that they're trying to hide. Like his his daughter or like... All right, I'm getting too down into the the plot, but like his his daughter, there's a secret that he's trying to hide from her, and they're trying to stop something from happening. And then towards the end of the season, something happens. Season two premieres at the end or the beginning of September, so that's one of those. If you haven't seen it, it's it's really good. I'm gonna give y'all two. One just started. It's only on episode two. It might be. I don't know when it comes out. It might be the third episode, but The Emperor of Ocean Park. Forrest Whitaker. It's on Paramount Plus, I believe. Okay. So far, two episodes in, Forrest Whitaker's character, he's a judge. He's supposed to be going for office. He doesn't get it. They don't really explain why he doesn't get it. Supposedly, one of his high school friends or college friends is a former CIA operative that was actually doing war crimes. He doesn't get it, and then suddenly he's dead. They say heart attack, but two episodes in, you're starting to see it wasn't a heart attack. Man's got murdered. So Emperor of Ocean Park, it just started. I would say definitely that, but I'm going to go with a classic. Monk. I don't know if y'all have seen it. Oh, that is a classic. Yeah, right. But Monk, eight seasons. It's enough there for you to binge and watch. They actually did a spinoff, I think, last year, two years ago, where they created a little movie from it. Monk, top tier acting, storylines. You get comedy, you get mystery, you get thriller. Really, really, really good, Monk. And just, just to close it out, just to give y'all a little more context of just how Apple TV don't be missing. We mentioned those shows. You got Shrinking, Ted Lasso, The Morning Show, Severin, Defending Jacob, Hijack. It, get Apple TV. You're going to have a lot. Stuff to watch over there. You got the Steph documentary. You got Magic Johnson. He got a little doc on there. The banker. It, Apple TV does not miss y'all. I think that's the best streaming app out there right now. And their original content. You could get other stuff on there too, obviously. But their original content for a streaming app that has original content. Apple TV. Apple TV don't miss. Wait, would you say, all right, this is just a, 
would you say Apple TV is better than Netflix? Quality wise, yeah. I think because they they do. I read somewhere that they do spend a lot more money than Netflix, but Netflix just gets more viewers and subscribers. Which, I mean, if people just paid attention and uh, it's tough. There's so many different streaming services. I know you got to pick between Apple TV, Paramount Plus, MGM. You got BritBox. You got all these different things that you could like look through. But like Apple TV is legit. It's probably it might be the best one because some of those series they're like legit. Like you got Silo. You've got yes. like you said, Defending Jacob. Uh, I, I just finished that like a couple months ago. Um, there's a couple other ones too, but like, yeah, those, those shows, they really put time and effort into them. And it's slow it, horses. Yeah, that's right. The slow horses. Party. Yo, the after party. Oh yeah. Y'all watch slow horses? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've watched it. Yeah. Oh, what? You, you, you just said that earlier. <laughs> after party. That's the best thing that I've ever seen Tiffany Haddish in. Shout out to Apple TV. That's the best thing <laughs> ever, ever I've seen her in. When I first saw that she was like one of the star roles, I'm like, ah, I don't know about watching this. And then I watched it. And I was like, oh, okay. They somehow fixed whatever the problem is. So shout out to Apple TV. And to your point, I think Netflix, they're better because they got more to offer. But if we're talking about just original content, Apple TV hands down. But Netflix, you can also go watch something that they ain't create on there. So for your bang for your buck, Netflix, because you got more to offer. If you want quality, Apple TV. As far as I know, Apple TV don't be on your head top talking about you can't share your account with nobody. Netflix. You right. right. Netflix be on that. I be getting the messages on the TV. Like, oh yeah, you're not the you're not the host account. Dang, man, that don't work for two weeks. But y'all already know the bill. Y'all know the vibes. If you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. Bitch, mom, we out. Peace.